here. Um, okay, so thank you for your attendance. So per the agenda, Paul's here, great. Um, for the agenda, approval of the, uh, of the agenda. So if everybody's got the agenda as of 24 hours ago, hopefully everybody's had a chance to over to look over it. And so through unanimous consent, is anyone opposed to moving forward with the agenda and voting if we have quorum? I don't think we can since we don't meet quorum right now. Well, no, I, yeah, 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 no, no, once we have quorum. Okay, so the agenda looks to be good. Let's move on. I'm going to actually strike my um, announcements for this week. I've been slammed. So let's move on to the round, the roundtable reports and committee committee updates per the agenda. Section two, governing documents committee. Paul. Sorry, I'm having some trouble with my audio. Um, so would you mind uh, pushing me on the agenda for the governing documents? Yep. Thank you. Well, I, I'm working on that. Okay. Say cab. I've, so um, I have a few things actually to report on say cab. So um, announcement to everyone on the council. Um, Armando will be our say cab advisor. Um, for the upcoming upcoming um, fall spring term. So um, I was really excited to hear him. I had a really good conversation with him this morning about that. Um, um, things we want to get done. Um, I believe he's also going to be chairing um, his portion of SACAB. So he they uh, I believe see someone from CCD told them he'd be kind of the chair of SACAB, which I couldn't try to figure out that is, but um, meetings are in the process of happening this week. Um, my second report on SACAB is um, some of you might have heard the news. Um, Siggy's hub here in Tivoli. Um, is being turned into office space for the Auraria Student uh, Sustainability Account um, Group here on campus. Um, we, I spoke with Roy and I spoke with Armando. We had some issue with this because um, this was a, this was kind of made while SACEB was out of session, and um, we no one knew about this. This kind of we we as SACEB, a tri-institutional kind of body, kind of got steamrolled here. Um, that's kind of the the Roy, the words Roy put. So. Um, we're definitely going to look to get take out up ring as fast as possible and kind of get these issues addressed. So. Thank you, Stephanie. Do you have anything to add? No, um, but I think we had a question about Siggy's Hub. Siggy's Hub is kind of just um, it's like right now it's like a con where a space where students can hang out. I think there used to be like a ping pong table. Um, I know a lot of FSL groups use it to kind of host information, not informationals, but like study sessions and things like that. Um, but no, I think he covered it pretty well. Okay, hey, thank you. Gabe, Board of Trustees, any updates? Uh, no update from me. Um, I know that uh, that we have our Board of Trustee meetings on August 24th and 25th, I think. It's Thursday and a Friday. Um, and that's gonna be like the first one I'll be in. Um, yeah, but no update from you from that for now. Hey, thank you, Board of Trustee. Uh, Paul, Governing Documents Committee. Thank you, Dan. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay, maybe a little background music. Um, I will mention respectfully, the Governing Documents Committee has met again last Thursday at uh, three o'clock. Um, we had a pretty productive meeting where we discussed more comments that have been raised during the week by our colleagues, uh, Taylor, as well as some members of the committee, myself, um, Lee and Dan have been commenting in the documents as well, or are talking about them during these meetings. Um, there ha I, will, I do want to note that there has been somewhat low participation in our governing documents committee meetings. Um, and part of the problem with that is that we may uh, we may not be producing a document that everyone will support when, when it comes to, um, you know, the, the ultimate like ratification of the document and stuff. Um, and so um, I'd really like to see everyone's voices at the table or, you know, um, continue participation in it. Even if you aren't in the committee, I will still read your comments and read in the document. 
and know that that's just nested under the committee's portion of our SharePoint folder under governing documents. We have a copy for comment and a copy for revision on the first draft that we're working on. We have united on creating a, an article based structure so that it'll be preamble, article one, article three, article three, article four, you know, name, object, membership, officers, et cetera, amendments at the end. Um, so we've united on that change and we're currently uh, drafting the existing communal document into the relevant sections there. We've added the accountability structure that we voted on last meeting to both our governing document, uh, the communal structure and the membership handbook. And so we have that in both of them now. Um, let's see, I don't know, let's see if I'm missing one Oh, we had talked about whether or not the, uh, Taylor had raised this uh, notion that um, perhaps during the summer while uh, work on the council is voluntary, that perhaps our governing documents should also be voluntary. I raised this um, this idea to the governing documents committee at large, and um, most folks disagreed with the notion. We, we think that our, um, when I say we, I, I say those who meet during the committee meetings for the governing documents committee unite on the idea that our governing document, be it a communal document or a constitution or a upon it, needs to last year long. And so that's from, um, you know, the moment you were elected to, you know, the next group is elected instead of, for example, I, I think, I think a lot of people were talking about it, making a, um, making the council, like, if all the rules are optional during the summer, how do we hold anyone accountable? Uh, is there any way to, like, what, what could that invite in terms of, um, you know, uh, problems, potentially, so. That's everything the Governing Document Committee has report. I will say we will be meeting next Thursday at three. I encourage everyone to make comments. Um, I've also tasked everyone on the committee who's shown up with finding one or two items in both the Governing Document, uh, both the Governing Documents that we can workshop or maybe discuss during our next meeting. So that's all I got. Mike. Hey Dan, uh, so this is, um, I agree with everything Paul said, but um, I just wanted to make that so that um, we have quorum. So with the addition of Nomi, we are at eight members. We have quorum. We can vote on the uh, new business and agenda stuff. So, awesome. Thanks, thanks, Mike. Okay, so social media committee updates. Is that you, Alex, Paul, Chad's not here, and then yeah, Alex. I um I am not familiar with all the stuff that the social media committee has been uh, doing. I know that there was some stuff that was updated on our YouTube and Twitter that Paul had brought up last week, and I did uh, get a chance to watch the recorded videos from that meeting. Um, and um, yeah, and so I've, I've been working on a social media icon for right now. It's the Instagram uh size but it's it's just something i drafted up really fast for the food drive if uh things move forward with that we'll have um so, some a draft a draft for for the um marketing material um yeah and then and then i guess i'd pass it over to paul for any other updates on the social media committee Thank you, Alex. Um, so for the social media committee, we, we met again uh, last Wednesday at noon, and um, it, was, it was a fairly productive meeting. It was Mike, uh, Chad, and I. So while there was only three of us, we weren't able to make any huge sweeping changes or anything like that. Chad did announce his nomination uh, or his, um, his candidacy for the chair of the social media committee, and I voiced my support for him. Um, we, we talked about who's, who, who should take which social media platform. I believe I had um, I had agreed to you know handle the Twitter and the YouTube. I remember Mike talking about working together to uh, you know work on the Instagram. I remember Alex you had voiced wanting to work on the Instagram too. So I got something YouTube could collaborate on. And I believe Chad said he'd be willing to work on Facebook, work with Facebook for our events and stuff. We we all talked about our strategy for posting. You know, not all platforms are going to have the same stuff posted to them. You know, you're not just posting documents on Instagram. There's no people go to Instagram for. We'll have photos on Instagram, events on Facebook, uh, you know, documents and text on Twitter. And we can, you know, 
um, tailor our posts to be specific to the platform we're posting it on. And we, there was talk of bridging out into TikTok. So that, that's all I have for the social media committee. I invite everyone else to join us next Wednesday at 12. Um, you know, given the time between now and then, um, if you're in that committee and that time absolutely does not work for you, please speak up. We can maybe we can work to change. It. Paul, Paul, did uh, Canva did Canva get purchased for uh, SGT SAC? Yeah, I should have mentioned that. Thanks to Armando, we now have a Canva Pro. And so, if you'd like to use our Canva Pro and you're on the social media committee, uh, reach out to me and I'll make sure you get that information so you can log in and use it. Um, really cool platform. Definitely worth trying out, testing out. We've already got some new ideas. We're working on some new drafts. So. Thanks again, Paul. Um, CSGC representatives, I can take this. Um, no updates. No updates. Um, still waiting to set up a meeting with the chair. Uh, probably do that in the middle of August once we can get all together. Um, haven't heard back from her, so I'll send her another email and we'll update uh, as as updates are available. Now, policy advisory committee. Is that uh, Re? You have the floor. Thank you. Um, we are meeting again next week. So there was a uh, meeting off and hopefully that policy for inclement weather will get finalized. That's the only one that we're working on just yet. And I'll let you know what happens with that. It's going to be presented to President Davidson and then I'm sure there'll be other policies to review. <laughs> Thank you, Ree. Uh, Mike, the PSAC Budget Committee and then the BRC Committee. Um, for uh, BTZAC um, budget committee. Um, sorry, let me grab my stuff. So, um, we have currently passed um two packages on to Armando for things to purchase, um, in the office. Um, sorry, I'm a little unorganized here. I can come here and list them off as per the resolution that I give gives the authority there. But um, the first package was consumables. So um, we plan to have a lot more people in the office. Um, and uh, have people over kind of students to kind of share, um. Their points of view of, of us as a council and um can just have more people in the office um the second package was uh, more office supplies so um i had received help with from, from some help from stephanie from paul um things that we could generally just need um for, for the office as well um dan move on real quick come back to me at the end because i need to pull up the spreadsheet so i can go over it with you guys so okay sounds good um Faculty Student Affairs Committee. Uh, Naomi, do you have any updates? And then Ree? Um, No, um, I think they're just going to end up not doing anything until um, the school semester starts. So, or so, I'm sorry, until the fall semester starts. So right now we don't really have anything to update you on. Um, at least I don't on my end, but um, Ree, if you do, please, please share that. <laughs> Thank you, Ree. Do you have anything to add? That's it. Nope. Okay. Naomi got it. Perfect. Okay. So then COVID response committee, Paul, go ahead with that. Thank you, Dan. Um, the COVID response committee, there's been an update to the contract tracing, the contract tracing, um, contact tracing uh, policy. Specifically, they've changed it so there is now no need for those testing positive and or those who have become aware of a positive case to call the health center directly to report a positive case. The use of online current of, of the online reporting form is sufficient to report a positive case. In response to changing guidance from public health agencies, the health center will no longer be conducting contact tracing on campus. So that's what I have to report from the COVID committee. Thank you. Student travel committee. I can take that there. There's been one additional um, student presentation. I wasn't able to attend that. I watched the. The presentation and we'll be score. Uh, we'll be scoring that actually. I might have missed the 24 hour deadline on that, but um, there was just one there this week. And so I, that's the only update I have there unless Paul or Re has anything additional. No, OK. There was um, only one today. It was today at noon. So you've got time to read it and I respond. Planned. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Oh, you froze. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> so funny when people freeze. Paul, we didn't hear you. You froze. I hopefully I'm not freezing like that every time I talk, but no. I um, I plan to review the the travel uh, presentation today and get back to them within 24 hours. Thank you, Paul. Mike, do you have a question or your hand raised? Um, I do have a question. Um, I can I have the, the list pulled up. If you want me to go over real quick, just to yeah yeah let's do that. The TSAC budget committee and the BRC committee. Thanks, Mike. Go ahead. Yes. So um in the first package, um it was a consumable package like I said. Um, we voted um, as the budget committee to buy um, a f like a 40 count of chips to the office. So people come there to get, have some snacks, um, some fruit snacks as well, and a, and a 48 pack, um, some tea, a variety of tea for people to have, and then a five pound uh, bag of coffee. Um, not from, and most of these we get from Amazon. Um, we're looking to lo like a local place to see if we can get the coffee. And then um, secondly, for the other package, which was the office supply package, and um, we voted to get a stamp pad. I'm um, in a custom kind of stamped logo set for it. Um, uh, some pens because we're kind of running out of pens in the office and then a wooden gavel for the co-chairs to use this fall. So that's what's been um, approved and sent to Armando's desk to buy us. Um, the th and um, I would we'll just say add we're adding in a third package at some point, which could be cleaning supplies. So that's the next one up. Um, currently, but that's what we have uh, bought so far, so. Awesome, thank you. Um, perfect. So Dr. Barone um, and Armando, I guess the advisor updates. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I really, I don't know that I have a lot of updates at this time. I feel like I gave a lot last time. Um, just a reminder though, around just thinking about, and I don't know if you've already talked about this, but whatever goal setting planning session that you all um, are planning on having, I would recommend doing that sooner rather than later. And I would also recommend any additional like presentations, training sessions, um, those types of things that you all, if you all, I don't know if you have a subcommittee for this or how you're going to decide what you're going to take advantage of in terms of those kinds of trainings. But um, my recommendation would be that you get them on people's calendars sooner rather than later, including if you're having outside or external presenters, um, just to make sure that they can actually happen. I think we ran into challenges with that last year, um, and I think it was it, it just didn't go well. So <laughs> I'm hoping that we can do a little bit better this time. Um, and then the other thing I, I just wanted to also offer or just ask is um, with the co-chairs, deciding on co-chairs for fall, is that I haven't looked at the agenda, so my apologies, it's been kind of a hectic day for me today, but um, are you all planning on doing that today? Yeah, okay, perfect. I am going to have to jump off for a meeting at three o'clock, but I will be monitoring the chat and or if someone can email me or just let me know, I guess I can read the minutes. But if someone can directly either chat me or send me an email letting me know what you all decide so I can get back to Ed Brown um, for president's cabinet um, because he's, he keeps asking me. So yeah, that's all I got. Mike, do you have something? Yeah, um, in regards to Dr. Brown's first thing, um, I think we should set someone to kind of be in charge of um, at least one of us counselors to kind of put do that motion for like oh putting some trainings on these each, um, our schedule um, getting us together for some team building stuff like that I know um, Stephanie actually had mentioned that um, uh, but um, would someone want to take charge of that actually because I think that's something that's important as well we should do some team building um, get in, in front of each other and just kind of discuss things kind of what our goals for this year are mm -hmm. and priorities. Doctor, excuse me for just inter interjecting, but um, can hey, you tell can you all hear me? Oh, yes. Re finish. Go ahead. I, Re oh, oh, Stephanie, go ahead. Sorry, I heard my name and um, I would be happy to take it on if no one else wants to or collaborate with a couple of people to see if we can get some trainings and um, team bonding activities planned for the rest of the academic year. Sweden, it also looks like Naomi um, has some 
some ideas as well for team building. So maybe you two can collaborate and reach out and figure that out. Is that so? And my only comment was that Dr. Baron has brought up the retreat, um, the working retreat for planning for the year and things. And I wondered if you had ideas that you could even email us um, yeah. about the length of time, a, a kind of a loose agenda sure. of what you'd expect us to do, not detailed, but you know, sure. what we'd like to, what you'd like us to get out of it. I mean, I know it's all for us, but for the benefit of, you know, the job that we're doing. Yeah, so absolutely. Thank, thank you. Just to get an idea. So we know what we're doing. Thank you. Yeah, I have, um, I think I have some old agendas um, from previous years where we did, and we usually do something like a planning goal setting session in both fall and spring, but fall is more around team building. I think we focused a little bit more on team building and norm setting. Um, that's important, I think, when you all come together as a group um, and expectation setting, and then also like starting to get dig into the goals. So yes, I can send you something. Awesome, thank you. Great. Okay, sorry, I gotta jump off for another meeting, but I will defer to Armando. Is he here? I don't think he is. Oh, okay. I know he was just worried about stipends and getting everyone's information. So if you have not sent your information to Armando, that's the big push that he's making and it needs to be over to accounting and um, payroll, I want to say by next week. So if you haven't done that, please, please, please do that or expect that you will probably have a delayed August stipend if you don't do it. So those are the consequences. <laughs> OK. Thank you all, and sorry I got to jump off for a meeting with Will Simpkins. Thank you, Dr. Barone. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. So for our agenda, on to section three, new business. So let's, does, is there anyone opposed to swapping the co-chair elections and the CR 22-8, the resolution for the school supply drive? If you're opposed, speak up now. I have a question. So we're just switching those orders in the agenda, right? Yeah, we're just going to do this, have the resolution be read first and then do that. All right. OK, and, and Paul, if you'd like, I could read the resolution for you if you'd like. Um, but I mean. Wait, point of order. I just said a contradictory. Are we going to be reading the resolution first or doing the election first? No, we're going to do we're going to swap what's on the new bit. We're going to do the resolution first. OK. Cool, cool. And Mike, I uh, well, I appreciate your offer. I uh, I would I was hoping to read it. That's okay. okay. All right. For our agenda, Paul, the floor is yours. Uh, resolution for a school supply drive. The floor is yours. All righty, everyone. So this is the school supplies drive we've been talking so much about. Um, this is it, kind of written in a form of uh, resolution. Please let me know in the like in the chat or something if any part of this cuts out and I can restate it. Um, so this is CR 22-8, a resolution to acquire and distribute school supplies. It's a bit beefier than our original school supplies drive, but here it goes. So it's written by Paul Nelson, myself, and I've collaborated with Alex Horton, Michael Warner, Dan Giles, Naomi, and, um, and I believe we've worked with you to read, I'm sorry, I didn't have your name on there, but I'll include um, so the abstract says, we, the student government, the Student Advocacy Council of the Metropolitan State University of Denver, understand that our country is experiencing a period of economic difficulty where the cost of housing, food, gas, utilities, medicine, and health care have risen substantially. Our student population at MSU Denver experiences this rise in the cost of living as an acute struggle. Nearly 80% of our student population works while attending university, and many of those working students haven't seen a wage increase commensurate with the increase in the cost of living. We believe that financial limitations are some of the most common barriers to higher education. We should not be surprised if enrollment is down while many of our, well, so many in our country experience economic hardship. To retain our currently enrolled students, we must work to reduce uh, the financial burden that is imposed on them by the rising cost of necessities. 
The council will allocate $4,350 to the acquisition of school supplies at the beginning of every year so that they may be distributed to the students of MSU Denver at no cost. $2,350 will be allocated for a school supply drive event to be held in August before the start of fall classes. The remaining 2000 sorry, I lost my quote. Uh, the remaining 2000 will be set aside to resupply a cash of supplies in the student government office and to facilitate a specific to facilitate specific supply requests. Oh, thank you for saying something, Naomi. I will repeat the last 10 seconds here. The remaining $2,000 will be set aside to resupply a cache of supplies in the student government office and to facilitate specific supply requests. This will make it so that students may not reach out to the SG TSAC office throughout the school year or so that they may uh, throughout the school year so that they uh, should they need additional supplies. Unused funds allocated for supplies will be returned to the budget if left unspent at the end of the school year. So if you don't have trouble hearing that, please let me know and we can have Mike read the rest of it. And was there any problems with my audio? Paul, right. it's kind of, there's a loud background noise, but I could hear you. I don't know about anybody else. Anybody else. Okay, Mike, I, I, uh, I, take, I take it all back. I take it all back, my friend. Would you mind reading the, the rest, the whereas is in the there for us? Yes, um, where are you at on that? Do you mind uh, which whereas we're at, sorry. You're all good, right after the abstract. And so just okay. read the, just, yeah. all right, so thank you. Works for me. So um, after the abstract, whereas the Metropolitan State University student government, um, uh, comma, the Student Advocacy Council recognizes the high economic difficulties in the rising cost of housing, food, gas, utilities, and medicine and healthcare that constitutes the present conditions we and our fellow students experience. Whereas nearly 80% of students at MSU Denver work while attending university, many of whom have been or have effectively sub have been effectively subjugated to wage decreases and the lack of wage adjustments commensurate with the rise of the cost uh, rise in the cost of living. This includes most of the students, employees who work for our university, most student employees who work for our university. Whereas uh, financial limitations constitute a fetter that reduces the number of students who would otherwise be able to succeed in completing their degree. This is antithetical of the university's CADRE values namely accessibility and equ equity. Whereas a decrease in enrollment is no surprise while most workers in our state and our country at large have effectively experienced a gradual pay decrease over the last decade in the face of stagnating wages and rising costs of living. Whereas we believe that to retain our current enrolled students, we must work to reduce the financial burden that is imposed on them by the rising costs of necessities. So this is the whereases. Therefore, be it hereby for the result, the SG, TSAC will allocate $4,350 of our budget to the acquisition of school supplies for our fellow students. Therefore, be it hereby for the result, the SG, uh, the student government, TSAC will spend $2,350 of the funds allocated to supplies to hold the school supplies drive event in August before the start of the fall semester. Um, for the start of fall semester classes. We welcome other institutions to co-host this event and other student organizations to participate. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the remaining allocated funds that are not spent on the school supplies drive will be set aside for the acquisition of additional supplies for the maintenance of the cache of supplies in the office, in addition to the functioning to functioning as a fund from which students may request specific supplies that we do not already have. These individual requests will be sent over to the budget committee for review and approval. The budget committee will have oversight and have oversight over the use of these funds. Thereby, here, therefore, be it hereby further resolved, the budget committee will create a request form for the students to fill out that fill out for the acquisition of supplies we don't already have in the office supply cache. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved at the end of the year, any unused funds from this allocation will be transferred directly back into the TSAC budget. That is the end of the draft. Everyone hear me all right? Yep, thank you, Mike. So I open up the floor to discussion. Starting with the opposition. If not, we move on. Well, actually, we have to it have to be motioned, but um, yeah, so let's start with discussion uh, opposition. Anybody opposed? Mm. Hearing none. This should be motion. Someone got a motion 
or oh, re go ahead. I'd like to move that we accept uh, this resolution to um, contribute $4,350 toward the school supply drive, the first of this council. The chair recognizes re some main move to main motion to accept this resolution. I second that motion. The chair recognizes Mike seconding Ree's main motion to proceed with the resolution. Go ahead, Paul. A point of order. When we say that we're going to accept the resolution, are we going to be voting on it? Ree? Like, is that what you have in mind? Yes. Yes, thank Please. you. Move, move to vote for the resolution. Okay. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Thank you, Paul. All right, we move to vote. I um I do have one question. Oh, sorry, Alex. It's, sort of a, it's all right. It's sort of an aside. We don't have to make any decisions about it now. Uh, but because we do make living documents that can be amended in the future, I wonder if in the future we could include certain textbooks that might be expensive and required for students to get their degree to be ed added into this uh Bill, and I would have said something sooner, but I didn't really think about it until now. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. I am for voting on it and I have no opposition, but uh, I do want to suggest that uh, we'll, we'll, we kind of run this through, see how it goes. And then if it, if it goes well, maybe amend it in the future to, uh, to include required textbooks. Yeah, yeah, good, good idea, Alex. Yeah, I think it could definitely just do another another resolution too at some point if this goes well. Considering they aren't quite, quite that related, but yeah, that's that's good. We can definitely do that in the future. So, all right, we'll move to vote. I appreciate your input, Alex. Uh, Stephanie. Oh wait, Naomi. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to piggyback off that real quick and just say I think that'd be a great idea. Uh, my only concern is just instead of like certain required textbooks. Uh, like, I think instead of that being at the school supply drive, we can give them a form to fill out and then whatever is left in the budget after taking all the other students, um, you know, taking care of them and their basic needs, then whatever we have left over, we can go through those forms and have them like, you know, fill out some kind of like form of, if, you know, them willing to show us their financial need for things and then what books they need and we can see if we can help them out yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for the textbooks? Yeah, yeah. There'll have to be another resolution. The textbooks aren't actually included in this one. So we're voting on the school supply drive right now. And um, all right, move to vote. Stephanie. I. Mike. <laughs> I love it. That was so cute. I vote yes. Bree. I. Gabe. Alex. Naomi. Hi. Paul. I vote yes. I recognize myself for a vote. Yes. The resolution unanimously passes. Thank you, Council. OK. On to co-chair elections. Mike. Yeah, I can take it from here, Dan. So um, last week we passed the um, bills. Oh, my computer's acting up. CR 22-6, a resolution to declare and facilitate fall 2020 um, student government TSAC election, co-chair elections. So um, in this bill, um, I outlined kind of a format of how we're going to do this. So um, we will begin here. So let me get you to the point. Here. So um, I will first announce the candidates. So there's only two candidates who have announced their running. That is Paul and Dan. So um, how we're going to do this is I uh, I believe Dan was the first person to submit for uh, my candidacy. So Dan, I will give you I'm going to allot you five minutes to kind of speak um, a prepared statement you have um, to the council in um, for the reason like why you should be why we should vote you in as co-chair. So you, I'm going to allow you five minutes. Thank you, everybody. Um, 
So although I have not prepared a statement, I, I am ready to talk about why I, I, I would like to be the a co-chair continuing through the fall. Um, I, I believe in, in order to have a, a, a well-oiled and productive council, um, co-chairs have to be in place that are willing to ensure that the meetings are run well and assert assert when you know things are not going well and, and kind of moderate in that case. Um, I believe that this last summer has been quite successful in in getting things done and being productive. So I'm so I believe that I will make a good co-chair going forward and um, be a good moderator in meetings, you know, because a chair simply has just a little bit of um, facilitation leading in a meeting, you know, versus other things. Um, so yeah, I believe I'll make a good co-chair and I would be happy to do that going forward um, for this next fall semester. And I believe we can get a lot of things done together. Um, I excel at coalition building and and um, gathering support and networking. And I believe that um, as a co-chair, we will I will be able to help facilitate along with everybody um, some real productive things for the students going forward. So thank you. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Um, Council, now, um, as for the document, we have 10 minutes to ask Dan any questions, um, concerns. Um, so we have a lot of 10 minutes that we do not all have to use um, to field Dan some questions of what you think. So um, that is, we'll start now. Alex, go ahead. Um, all right. So, Dan, I know this summer uh, in the way that you and I have been working together so far. I've noticed that you can be uh, very impartial, which I think is important for the co-chair. How do you plan to continue doing that into the fall semester? Well, that's a good question. Thanks, Alex. So impartial, yeah, you know, I think as the chair, um, it's important to just really, just to facilitate a good meeting. You know, I've always been ones that although, um, my vote vote counts. I think it's most important to make sure everybody's voice is heard and there's a space where everybody feels safe to do that. And so I will just continue to ensure that um, as as people raise questions or concerns immediately, you know, call on them and just make sure that everybody has a chance to speak and and voice their opinion in that. And I'll just to ensure that um, the most important besides my vote is to make sure everybody's voice is heard, regardless of if I sub I'm in agree agreeance or not. And so so that's how I plan to continue that. Alex, thank you. Thank you, Dan. I have a question for you, Dan. So um, what are your main goals that you think we as a council should um, have kind of going forward? What do you think we should tackle this year? What are those main ideas you think we should we should hit on this year? Yeah, well, um, Good question. So I think it's really important, the food bank. It's really important to, to me that people have food to eat, right? We shouldn't be having to choose between a bus pass and food and stuff like this. And so I think it's really important that we focus our energy and a good amount of our budget, which we already have past, you know, working on some of this for food. Um, another thing is just to just to continue breaking down and removing the barriers for students accessibility um, when it comes to uh, books and supplies such as this um, and just you know really reaching out to the students to know that they have resources at their fingertips and and really breaking down the barriers with the lack of communication and and when it comes to the school and the administrators and the students I think that's really important so I'd like to see some sort of workshop going on with the financial aid to ensure that every student realizes that there's money waiting for them there and um, yeah, so those are those are the main things that I um, would like to focus on at least this fall semester. Thank you, Mike. All right, Council, is there any other questions we have for Dan? Paul, go ahead. 
Dan, can you speak more to, um, I know you've alluded to it a bit, but can you speak more to what you see the role of the chair being in our council? Yeah. Yeah, so the role of a chair or co-chair, I think, is really it's it's to facilitate a good meeting, you know, to ensure that a meeting runs smoothly, that things are on the agenda. And when they're on the agenda, that we that the coach or the chair or the co-chair is to keep the agenda going and and to I guess not allow the meeting or conversations or debate to derail, you know, so if, for instance, like we just happened, you know, we we're talking about the school supplies drive and then we started bringing up this, the books, you know, so I think it's a good responsibility of the chair to be basically saying, hey, look, that's something else we're, we're, we're right here and this is what we're doing in order for a meeting to go smoothly because everybody has. And I really want to encourage everybody to put resolutions in for their ideas because every, we could have 25 of them every meeting and we would just go down the line and vote and everybody could have their thing like this. So, so really, as long as the chair could keep the meeting going, boom, 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 this is what we're doing, you know, and then um, ensure that everyone has has a space to speak and that other people can't don't speak over and over and over and over when other people haven't. So um, I could always improve in making sure that everybody has a voice and when, when it comes to seeing the hands good. But um, I believe that it's the main thing for a chair to do is to facilitate a safe, safe, productive meeting space. Thanks for that, Paul. All right, thank you, Paul, for that question. Um, Council, is there any other meeting, any other kind of questions you have for Dan? Going once, going twice. All right, um, we'll stop at five minutes there. Thank you guys for some questions. Um, now I will transfer the floor to Paul. You are the other not candidate for um, co-chair. Paul, um, I will allow you five minutes to kind of um, read a statement or read something about, kind of about yourself, um, why you should be co-chair this fall. Thank you, Mike. Um, Please, folks, let me know if there's problems with the audio again. I know there's some background noise. You best ignore it if you can. Um, so I was interested in running as co-chair, um, just seeing how, how, how Dan has done it um, and seeing how uh, efficacious he's been. Um, I, I know that um, in previous meetings, I've laid out a lot of my uh, personal principles and, and why I'm on the council personally. Um, so I won't rehash any of that, but I'll kind of talk about what, um, what I'd like what my motivations for being uh, co-chair are. Uh, I'd like to see us be a transparent council, you know, that's in full um, full accordance with the Colorado Sunshine laws, you know, so we don't get another hit piece written on us. Um, and so that students can freely join our meetings and enact their voice. Um, I, I, I would like to, um, you know, I remember one of the first things that we all talked about is that we united on this want for increased student engagement. And so I'd like to, uh, make that a reality by um, empowering student elections here on this campus. Um, we've already been in talks with the elections manager just on exactly what that might look like. It could even be things like debates, um, you know, participation with other student governments. I, I really think we should think big and try and reimagine what's possible, you know, and supply our school motto to what we can do here in student government. Um, but more than just like a transparent government and one in which the students are engaged, I want us to be a democratic body, right? One that is elected by a larger, a larger voting body, right? Not just 150 people. That's the reality we have, and that's the reality we have to work with. And it doesn't mean we're not a legitimate student government, but um, it does. It, it poses a, a problem to the notion that we have a democratic uh, election taking place if, if we have that low participation. So I want to remove barriers to civic participation in our student elections and abroad. You know, as part of the work we've been doing already. Um, and like Dan, I'm very interested in uh, bridging gaps of equity and accessibility in our campus. That means addressing material needs to the food pantry. That means working through the school supplies drive, and it will now be the school supplies cash. You know, we're going to be school supply. And so, um, my, my promise to you, if I'm elected chair, is to be transparent, to you know, work to, uh, like Dan, have a functional meeting where you know, we keep business flowing. I remember the very first meeting we all had, there was a moment at the end where things got a little, like, things got a little disordered. Like, um, there, people were speaking out of turn, nobody was being recognized, and we were off agenda. 
I um, I know that in that moment I did call for like some. I said, hey, we, we have an agenda, and so I promise that same kind of um, structure and gentle guidance when it comes to meetings in the future, where um, you know if something like that pops up, or if like what Dan's talking about, somebody gets off topic, we can gently guide the conversation back towards the pursuit of business so that we can more effectively uh, approach the business of the day. One last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, what I believe is a very important aspect of Robert's Rules of Order that isn't in our original book. The original Robert's Rules of Order talks about, you know, call on the person who raises their hand first. I believe in progressive stack. Um, and I think that, you know, while it is good to call on people who raise their hands first, we need to make sure that everyone is heard. And so we should, um, as chair, I would, you know, I would, I would specifically seek out voices that are underrepresented on this council. And I would look to hear from everybody if we can, um, before hearing from one person too many times. That way nobody hogs the mic, hogs the floor, hogs the, um, you know, where we can conduct business, I guess. So it's to have a progressive stack where all voices are heard. Um, and, and yeah, that's that's my goal. So sorry if that was a little choppy. I don't have anything hard written down, but it's just from the heart, freestyled. So uh, that's me. Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, I welcome them. All right. Thank you, Paul. I uh, appreciate that. So, Council, I now open this up for um, questions you guys can feel towards um, Paul. So, um, like uh, Paul mentioned, let's do a progressive stack. Raise your hand first, and I will call you. And do you have any questions for Paul? Here, I have a question for Paul. I will, I will fill the question for Paul. Uh, Paul, what are your um, what are your goals? What are your future goals for us at Council? Like, say, um, next semester, what do you think? What do you want us to have accomplished by next semester? For next semester, for next semester, I want us to have solidified our elections, um, like ahead of time. Like, I want us to solidify that within this semester, so that we're ready to go by next semester. And the same thing goes for events like food for finals. I want to have food for finals playing before next semester. That way we have our details of how the event will go, and then we can have a smooth event come the day of, uh, day of the event. So we plan far ahead of time. Long game. That's my goal for the next semester. It's long game. Let's do what worked last year and see what else we can come up with in terms of events. Thank you, Paul. I recognize Dan. Paul, so say we're both hypothetically, I guess it's probably more likely than not um, that you and I get elected co-chair and say we have a disagreement on on the ways of handling things. How, how will you initially go about us working through um, a disagreement so that we can you know, come to the table united and, and work through everything, uh, our, dis our, our disagreements so that you know we're a united front? So. I was thinking we submit an order for some boxing gloves or something. I'm just kidding. In all seriousness, I think that we will handle conflict like um, through dialogue. What could be opposing ideas, you know? But I know that we've had conversations where you've, you've had me see reason on issues and vice versa. So um, I think for us to, you know, approach conflict in a um, worthwhile way means to remain intellectually humble with the ideas we bring to the table, being ready to be shaken by the other's perspective. I uh, I commit myself to coming to the table with that in mind. Um, you know, value, like principles are still principles and I still plan to like fight for students, but um, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm going to, you know, say, Screw you, Dan. You know, this is going to be a fight. It's going to be, you know, let's let's have a good struggle about this, figure out what's best. And, you know, we can compromise. We can, you know, work through our difference of opinions. There's a number of things we can do um, that doesn't necessarily have to lead to uh, a, like a bad stall in conflict. Or anything like that. I mean, but if it gets particularly bad, we even have an accountability framework that enables us to work with the student conflict center. And I don't think it would come to that, but you know, we have a good framework for dealing with the of conflict. And so, um, but I don't think it'd come to that again. You and I have already worked together really well this summer. 
in bringing uh, what has now been eight resolutions to the table, folks. So when you're thinking about voting, and I know it's just the two of us who uh, nominated ourselves so far, um, you know, when you think about voting for the only two people you can vote for, keep in mind, we've been putting in a lot of good work on a lot of good resolutions. And so we're already very prone to um, working together well, I think. Thank you for that, Paul. Thank you, Dan. Um, Council, um, we still have five minutes. Is there any other questions you would like to ask of Paul? Okay, going once, going twice. Uh, Paul, do you have a question for yourself? I just wanted to say quickly, I welcome all questions, including ones that may be seen as, um, and, like, if they're antagonistic or if you think they'd be considered uh, like a criticism or anything, please feel free to ask. That is one of my, uh, one of the things I want to bring to the table as chair is being open to criticism because that is how we can improve. All right, Stephen Paul, Dan, go ahead. So, okay. Okay. Um, so say you're co-chair and, and there's a disagreement in the chat. Are, are you going to handle that any differently than you did prior to the co-chair? If so, how? If not, all good. Um, just curious. I think it'll depend on like a case by case basis, but I I do think that in the event that I am elected chair, that it would be um, it'd be a good idea to be a little more um, withdrawn from uh, some of the disagreements we've had in chat already. So um, because they have they have gotten a little nasty in some instances where people start you know uh, calling names and whatnot. So I think I uh, definitely will be participating in the sort of like uh, mudslinging for sure it's just not an effective use of our time and would constitute a barrier to effective chairmanship so that's my my goal would be to be more withdrawn from some of those instances though i can't promise that if someone were to you know do something outrageous that i myself would make the motion for, to form that accountability committee right so um i think that we should all stand up for um you know like uh I don't know. If something egregious were to happen on this council. We should all be able to. If you see something, say something. And I, I, I will. I would want to be able to say something. This doesn't mean that I'm going to um, have a bigger. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dan, for that question. Um, council, we have three minutes. Is there anything else you guys would like to ask of Paul? Going once. Going twice. All right. I will. End our questioning session there, guys. So um, as according to our document, um, I'm going to put a poll in the chat. Uh, do that. It's been put in there now. Um, there's three options on this poll, um, the two candidates who are running and then an abstention. So um, you um, as council um, get one vote or you get to choose um, who you want to be elected to your co-chair. So I'll, I'll let you guys do that now. I'll give, you, give us about like five, six minutes until all, um, all eight responses are collected. Also, if there's any difficulties with the poll, please let me know. I'm having trouble accessing the poll. You are. are you are you on your student accounts? I believe it's only ac accessible to um, these your student email. OK, let me.
We are waiting on just two more responses and then I will announce the results. Hey guys, is that is the voting poll on that sheet? The voting is in the poll. I just put in the chat. Oh, the poll. Can you... Yeah, I put a form in the chat that you can click on and go to the uh, go vote. OK, so, OK, so it's that link. OK, so I can't access it right now because I'm driving and it'll make me sign into my account and it will cut me out of the meeting. Um, do how do, can I just put who I'm voting for in the chat? Will anybody get offended by that? I just don't want to like leave you guys hanging, but I'm on my way to an appointment right now, so I can't like. I'm like not hands free, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I think we can if um, it's like I Alex you... and Naomi are both having trouble and those are the two I bet that are the final ones to vote. Yeah, okay. I just don't want anybody to get offended, but I just don't want to leave you guys hanging either. That's fine. I motion to um, amend um, the resolution now, uh, for the co-chair stuff just to do a voice vote to allow for a voice vote. Um, if you're having issues, I motion for that. Yeah, I, I second that if that's OK. Anyone opposed? Are we talking a, a voice vote on just the remaining two or? To oh. allow a voice vote. I'm motioning to allow a voice vote for I, the elephants. I am opposed to the way we're going about that. I just think we should suspend the rule on the use of Microsoft Forms uh, to allow for the use of a, you know, a, a, a audible vote uh, or a um, in the chat vote in this meeting. That's my, okay, so that'd be my wait, so alternative. Can you say it in the chat? So you cut out a little bit there, Naomi. Can you say that again? Did you say I could put it in the chat? Because I can I can talk to the text to put it in the chat. I think what's currently being discussed is a problem with our um, coach, our, our Paul Kulichar elections resolution, which specifies we use uh, forms. Um, just to be in order with what we've outlined, I think we should suspend the rule as opposed to amending the document. So what do you think about that, Mike? Would you be willing to withdraw your motion to instead suspend? Yeah, the rule? I was strong my motion. I'll second your motion. Okay. Anyone opposed to that to suspend the rules for form? Anyone opposed to to, I, I want to reword that specifically to allow the use of voice vote or text vote in the meeting um, for the elections. Just so everyone knows what we're voting on. Going twice. OK. No, no one is opposed. Hearing none. So I guess okay. Naomi and Paul or no, Alex. Go ahead and put your votes in the chat. Or if you want to say them, Naomi, since you're driving, you're welcome to say it too. That as well. Is it my microphone on? Can you hear me? And do you know you do get two votes. I am a little offended. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, I I vote for Dan. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to put it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um. So there we go. So um, two votes for Dan, um, Naomi, and Alex. You guys have the option, so you guys can choose. There's three options. You can choose um, as many of the options you want. You can choose Paul, Dan, or abstention. So you can choose two. You can choose. You can abstain. So um, are you guys both just choosing to vote for Dan? Yes, I vote Dan. Yes. So we have we have two votes out of the three options. Yes, so you can abstain and you can vote for Dan and Paul. When, oh, yeah, okay. like, well, yeah, yeah, I'm going to vote for Dan and Paul. Yeah. OK, well, guys, I appreciate you guys holding off these te technical difficulties. I appreciate that. Um, with the uh, votes casted in the vote on the majority's rule. So Dan, you've received eight votes. Paul, you've received um, so we see six votes. You both have majorities. You both um, are duly elected as co-chairs for the fall semester. I will submit my Excel sheet and with some brief notes on how we got the other two votes in um, to our advisors and anyone else who um, 
who we need to look at it. But um, congratulations, you two. You have been elected co-chair um, of the fall semester. And congratulations. With that election, yes, with that election, I dissolve my kind of chairmanship. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, Mike. All right, um, let's take a look at the uh, agenda, if I can find it on my mini screens. OK, so. Ah, looks like we have no old business. And so section five per our agenda is um, public comment. So is there any, hopefully there is, is there any public comment from anybody who would like to share concerns, ideas, thank yous, congratulations with the council? And if so, please just put your name and that you'd like to speak in the chat and we would be happy to give the floor to you. Going once. Going twice. All right. I'm hearing none and I'm not seeing anybody of the public in participants in the meeting. So uh, per our agenda. Oh, Paul uh, wanted to mention that he's been printing out a packet of all resolutions and that four of them have been picked up from our table by members of the public. So he printed out um, a, a packets with all resolutions and put them out in front of our office and they're and they're walking away. So that's good. Perfect. OK, uh, Alex. Um, so this said doesn't have a lot to do with what we talked about today. Um, I wanted to kind of just put the idea out there about the food pantry, though, uh, with the fall semester coming up. Um, and I wanted to maybe see what uh, what y'all were thinking, if, uh, if we wanted to do that maybe next week or the week afterwards, sometime around there. I believe was it didn't um, Miguel asked to be on the agenda for next week, I believe, or the 14th or was it the 12th? I don't remember. OK, I'll look up in the email. Go ahead, Paul. I would just motion that we, we may that we table the food, uh, the food pantry discussion for when we do have Miguel uh, and we bring the resolution to the table because I know Alex you and I have been working on that resolution, um, which Open to other members if they want to get in on it. Um, the 19th. Yeah, so I, I just I, I would propose that we table that until um, that meeting. Yep, yep, I agree with that. It's uh, Friday the 19th is when Miguel is going to come talk and his and his crew is going to come talk to our uh, council. Cool, sounds good. Thank you, Alex. Sounds good. All right, per the agenda, um, adjournment. I move to adjourn. Is anybody opposed to adjourning the meeting? Going once, going twice. All right, Council, thank you. Have a good weekend. Be safe. If you need anything, you know where to find us. Awesome. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good stuff. Definitely. Good See you job. All. Thank you all for showing up. I know um, it wasn't ideal, but I'm glad it worked out. Thanks. Hey, Mike.